you are watching Cold Fuse Chin. A small footnote to the viewer. This video will not be a tinfoil hat video. I'm not going to be talking about how Google's becoming too big and is going to be the next Skynet. I'm going to give you facts. There will be some small personal opinions within the summary at the end of the video, but that's it. Now, please enjoy the production. Nineteen ninety five. I was five years old and the public internet was only three years old. People didn't really know what the internet was or how to use it, or even if it was of any use to them. On one particular day in nineteen ninety five, history would change forever. A twenty two year old Larry Page and a twenty one year old Sergey Brin meet for the first time at Stanford University. Larry and Sergey soon become good friends and begin collaborating on a search engine called Backrub. In nineteen ninety five, there are about 13 search engines to choose from, and they were all terrible. They didn't give back anything remotely close to what you asked for. But Backrub was different. It had a secret formula. It was called PageRank, and you're looking at it now. This one formula was one of the reasons that Backrub performed so much better than the other search engines of the time. This was the key, the secret. This formula will indirectly be worth billions in the future. On September 15th, 1997, Backrub was changed to Google Com. And the rest, as they say, is history. Google. The stuff you probably don't know. A lot of us just really see the surface of Google. We use their online services like Google Search, Gmail, YouTube, and Google Plus every day. Many of us have a phone featuring Google software, and maybe even Google hardware. Google's self-driving cars and augmented reality glasses are cool, but very few people ask themselves the question, how big is Google, and what else are they up to? Let's find out. Please make sure you're seated before you continue. Google is much bigger than you think. First we'll look at five interesting Google acquisitions of the past, but then we'll look a bit deeper into some revolutionary things that the company has been doing over the past few months. Number 5 Android Acquisition date 17th of August 2005 Cost $50 million We all know what Android is and no doubt the best part of Android is its open source nature. This allows the operating system to be on anything from phones to cars to fridges. Android is everywhere. Out of the 261.1 million smartphones sold in 2013, 211 million of them were running Android. That's over 80%. Android has allowed access for countries such as China to really have a serious shot at the smartphone industry. Let's move on. Google is obviously just more than Android. Number 4 YouTube Acquisition date 10th of December 2006 at a cost of $1.65 billion. I will do no justice to convey just how mind-blowingly huge YouTube is. The facts will do this for me. Looking at YouTube purely just as a search engine, it's bigger than Bing, Yahoo and Ask all combined. In fact, it's the largest search engine on the planet, second to only Google search itself. So it's obvious that people are searching for a lot of things. This only must mean there's a lot of content on YouTube. But how much continuous video content actually gets uploaded per day? Maybe a week? One month of continuous video? Two months? A year? Nope. Try a decade. That's right. Over a decade's worth of video is uploaded at a rate of 72 hours per minute. And that's just in one day. It's nothing. If you start adding it up, it gets even stupider. For one month, just one month, there is 4 billion hours worth of video watched each month. That's over 450,000 years worth of video watched in just one month. And of course, as you watch this particular video on YouTube, those rates are increasing. I could go on with the facts, but there's a lot more crazy stuff to cover in this video. Number 3 Motorola Mobility Acquisition date 15th of August 2011 at a cost of $12.5 billion. Motorola Mobility was in trouble in the early 2010s and Google used this opportunity to get themselves into the hardware side of the smartphone world. But halfway through the production of this video, something very interesting happened. Google sold Motorola Mobility to Lenovo for $2.9 billion. This makes it seem as if Google's interests were elsewhere. Perhaps they just wanted to hang on to some of the patents that they acquired from the acquisition of Motorola to help Android defend itself against Apple. Perhaps in court cases in the future, or perhaps the ones past. Number 2 Boston Dynamics Acquisition date 
10th of December, 2013. Cost? Unknown. Okay, so this is where things start to get a little bit crazy. Remember those robots I was showing you a while back in that top 10 video? Google bought Boston Dynamics, the company that created the robotic technology. If you want to know more about these amazing robots, just check out the first YouTube video link in the description below. This acquisition means that Google now owns some of the most advanced robotic technology on the planet. It doesn't end there though. Number 1 Nest. Acquisition date? 13th of January 2014, at a cost of $3.2 billion. Nest Labs previously created some very beautiful smart thermostats and smoke detectors as part of their goal to create a conscious home. Google is going to help them do that in a very big way. We may eventually see a home powered by Android and Google Now. These kind of acquisitions will be quite interesting over the next five years or so. And here's a bonus item. DeepMind. Acquisition date? 26th of January 2014. This was Google's first AI company acquisition. DeepMind can be described as a world-class, groundbreaking technology on the cutting edge of machine learning. They use systems neuroscience to build powerful and general-purpose learning algorithms. But let's get to the Google robot, because it seems like they have all the parts in place, so let's dissect a bit. Let's start with what would be the brain of the robot, and that is DeepMind. We don't actually know that much about this company, but we know that it was created by a uh, child prodigy who liked chess and has gone on to create games. And we know that they have some patents in looking at images, their technology, and deciphering what's inside the images without humans saying what's actually in those images. And then let's... So critical thinking. Exactly. Yeah. Critical thinking. As I said earlier, this video is not a tinfoil hat video, so the aim is not to scare people. So I'm going to tell you facts. According to official statements, the DeepMind technology is going to be used for Google image search. For now, anyway. So that's a bit about what Google's been doing. But what about some of the more crazy out there stuff? Well, there's definitely some lesser known things going on at Google. Of course, I'm mainly talking about Google X. Google X is a semi-secret facility run by Sergey Brin and Astro Teller. Google X aims to, quote unquote, improve technologies by a factor of 10, according to Astro Teller. He goes on to say, Think of science fiction sounding solutions. In late 2013, Google went on a robotics company acquisition spree. Every day, they purchased a new company that operated in fields such as humanoid robots, robotic arms, and computer vision. I guess we just have to wait for the announcement to see what they're really up to. Another very interesting project is Project Loon. Project Loon aims to provide internet service for the 4 billion people that don't yet have access. It aims to do this via balloons in the stratosphere. The balloons will float in the stratosphere about 20 miles or 32 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The balloons will create an aerial wireless network with 3G speeds. It's hoped that Project Loon will bring a low-cost way to get the rest of the world online. So as you've seen, some amazing advances in technology are happening right now. It's an exciting time to live. Anyway, we'll take a short break and then we'll be straight back after this. Every day, America Online is making it easier for people to live, work, and play. Yeah, downloading is easy too. You know, I can even send email on the internet. And welcome back. Let's get straight back into it. Recently, Google was part of a world first event. Let's check out the news bulletin from CNN to see what it was. Google and NASA have teamed up to share one of the world's first commercial quantum computers. This machine, made by Canada's D Wave, will be installed in a NASA research center in California. Yep, so as it turns out, Google is also in the quantum computing game. Now, we really don't have enough time to go into all the details of what it does and how it does it, but the bottom line is Google is involved in one of the world's first commercially available quantum computers. Now, performance-wise, it's not that great for a quantum computer. It's just a tiny bit faster than a regular computer at the moment. But of course, it's the very first version of a brand new sort of computing, so it's going to take some time to get there. But it's pretty cool, that chip you're staring at is an actual quantum computer. It's hoped that this computer could be used in the future to solve very complex optimization problems, one of which is global warming. But of course, one step at a time. The mysterious barges. In October 2013, four strange floating barges were found off the coast of Treasure Island, San Francisco, Rickers Wharf, Portland, and New London in Connecticut. Google refused to give any detailed statements about the use of the four 250 feet long, 2,000 plus ton barges. The only explanation given for their existence was to, in quotes, to use the barge as an interactive space where people can learn about new technology. 
Some say it's just a storehouse or marketing area for Google Glass, but no one knows for sure. And now we'll end off the video with the most recent announcement. January 16th, 2014, Google announced their specialized contact lenses. These contact lenses will provide a glucose monitoring system for diabetics using a non-intrusive method. So, over the next decade, we may see home automation from a conscious house, advanced intelligent robotics, and the global expansion of internet coverage. But in 10 years, just how much will Google own? Their services may already account for almost 40% of all internet traffic. In one way, it's a bit unsettling to see a company have such a large and growing embrace over every aspect of the technological universe. But on the other hand, it only can be, and it has to be Google that advances the state of our world. There's no other company out there that has the resources and infrastructure to do the research and develop such amazing technologies and produce products at a reasonable price for the world. The only thing I ask of you, Google, is to just stay sincere. So you've just seen all the latest information about one of the largest, most dynamic and influential companies we're ever likely to see for a long time. So what do we take away from all of this? Well, you can look at it this way. The founders of Google, Larry Page and Sergey Brin, were just two regular guys. Two regular college dropouts to be exact. They saw a need, a need for more accurate search, and they put their minds to it, and you've just seen the result. So the next time you feel like giving up on an idea, just think about that. Two very intelligent, but otherwise regular guys changed the world. So what do you have to lose? All right, so I'm not a life coach, but it's still food for thought. So that was Google, and this is me. Hey, to go here, the creator of this channel, and also that video, of course. So if you guys are new here, I've got some music videos and some documentaries and all sorts of other stuff, because I just do a little bit of everything, really. So if you know someone that likes Google or technology in general, and you want to share this video, you can do that as well, because, um, you know, editing, and putting together and planning one of these videos takes quite a lot of time. I'm not sure if you could notice that or not. So just any little thing helps. You know, people have been saying I should get my stuff out there. So this is my effort to try and do that, you know. Wink, wink. Yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. All right, so I'll see you again for the next one and enjoy your day. Cheers. But uh, it's, all in, it's all in good fun and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you again soon for the next video. I don't know what I'm talking about.